Hello, everybody. Welcome along to the Event Industry News Podcast. My name is James Dixon, and as always, I wish you a very good morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever or wherever you tune into today's podcast. And it's a warm one today. We're recording this on Monday, the 18th of July, when temperatures are, are going to hit sort of 35, 36 degrees, um, all of these weather warnings out there. So depending on when you listen to this, either stay safe and stay cool, or I hope you were cool. And for anybody that's working out, on an outdoor site, particularly at this time of year, guys. Uh, stay safe out there. Stay hydrated, everybody. Um, and it's very apropos to what we're going to be talking about today uh, on the podcast. Uh, it's all things festival related today. And specifically, the Liverpool International Music Festival, which returns at the end of July in just under two weeks' time from when we are recording today's podcast for the first time since the pandemic. I'm delighted to say that from the Playmaker Group, who are the creative production and, and geniuses behind uh, the Liverpool International Music Festival is Yao Awusu and joins the podcast today. Yao, very nice to see you. Thanks for joining the podcast. No, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm excited to, to chat all things Lou. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and in and amongst all sorts of other stuff that you guys uh, at the, the PMG have got going off at the moment um, that you told me about off air. But uh, yeah, specifically Liverpool International Music Festival. First of all, thanks for, for taking the time because, you know, I, I'm sure a lot of our listeners will relate to the fact that we're just under two weeks to go before an event of this scale. Your phone will be ringing, your emails will be pinging. There'll be all sorts of stuff happening and all sorts of balls that are in the air juggling. So thanks for your time. And um, how is it at the moment, just before we get into nitty gritty now how are you feeling at this this moment in time two weeks out from the uh, from the event i always like to believe um, i'm quite calm um i have the luxury of working with coach liverpool with who, who, you know who, who manage the event you operate the events and, mm. and they're you know so experienced within live events you know coming you know they do have such a variety from you know the lfc parade to you know the giants that you know people knew happened in liverpool a couple of years ago to you know firework displays you know the 08 culture uh, european city of culture stuff so that that team is really good so i i feel and we you know this is the ninth year of us working together so i feel very comfortable that um they will handle stuff and they contact me when it's fires to be put out and stuff like that so but you know you you, you'll know when you're in the last days or something you've got to um trust in the system that you, the systems you put in place absolutely and, yeah and of course you do yeah take charge so i tend to kind of um be quite relaxed and, and just just be in it and, and flow yeah but and plus you know good, good or bad you've had three years to to prepare prepare for this because you know like many events that are happening at this time at the moment they've not had a chance to, to run since you know 2019 since pre-pandemic you know 100%. Um, I think the challenge we've got, which I'm, I'm sure we'll get into, is like we decided to change the format. So the format yeah. of pre-pandemic and the format that we're doing now is 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 basically the opposite. Which is yeah. which for me as a curator and and a, and a programmer is really interesting mm. um, and really challenging. And I think that you know the team of culture Liverpool have been the same way. It's like it's a, it's a different puzzle. Yeah. To kind of work out. So it's it, it, it's exciting. But again, it it, it it just means that we can't just take the format and the, the system that we had last year. We're actually trying to do something differently and do it and do it well, you know, be leaders again in, in that field. Do you know what I mean? Well, well, let's get into that because because something that that, that was uh, announced via the festival's channels at the end of June was that you know that there's an estimate that at, at least half a million pounds in revenue is going to be gener- generated for the city centre in Liverpool um, as a result of the forthcoming festival. And when I looked at that figure, I actually thought. I think you might actually be doing yourselves a bit of a disservice there, and and, and may, you know, I, I would suspect, and I mean this in a positive way, that you probably underegged that massively. I think you could conceivably estimate that figure three or four times higher, um, given the scale that you're undertaking, given that it's going to be in in such a, a rich city as uh, as Liverpool. Um, and and let's get you know actually give some context to, to people who listen to this previously the festival was i suppose traditional in some respects it was in sefton park it was an outdoor event you had the big stage you had the sound the light everything that goes with having a big outdoor event with a big crowd of people in a park or in a field somewhere with other stages going off as well yeah. this time around that change that you referred to is very much that it's all going to be in city center venues isn't it you're going to be utilizing some of those great venues that are in the city center tell us i suppose first of all why why that change was was decided upon well i think you know we've we've as well as the the park element of lymph 
we've always done stuff in venues, but it's almost been peripheral stuff and, you know, mm. missions and, you know, some kind of like quirky aspects that will, will tap into other audiences. But I think coming off the pandemic, you know, creators and those who create platforms for creators, such as venues, really got hit hard. And it mm. felt like if Lymph was going to come back, and I suppose you go back to the, you know, the purpose of Lymph, it, it's to kind of fit in a, a, a industry within Liverpool that thrives and exists already. So it's about Lymph adding to that or or supplementing that. It, it's not, it's not. So what we felt was needed was, well, these venues have taken a hit over the last couple of years. What mm. can Lymph do as the leading music brand festival entity? What can it do to help those venues? Yeah, yeah. Right? So the easiest way is not to go, okay, we're going to take 200,000 people to a park over the weekend. Why don't we we put, even if it's less people, into your venues where they can, you know, buy drinks, revisit the spaces, feel safe in the spaces because we know Lymph will make sure it's a safe mm. space. Um, why don't we do that? And it just felt like a, um, a smart decision in that way, you know, kind of re-inject as much as possible into the scene and the industry locally that, you know, it, it's mm. getting there, the hospitality, the tourism, it's getting there, but let's use Lymph like that. And then the other one was kind of, how can we then also support promoters and the artists as well through that? So we've we've actually um, given out £10,000 worth of support to promoters to try things that they might be scared to do at the moment yeah, because yeah. audiences are still taking a little while to go, okay, well, if we, if we give you this little bit of money so you don't have to worry about a loss, you know, maybe you put your ticket price low, maybe you book artists that you wouldn't ordinarily, ordinarily be able to do, et cetera, et cetera. And again, towards it, it's more of an offer for the people, not just of the city, but of, you know, the whole UK and further to be able to come in and experience this great city. And and again, the way the venues are dotted around, you've got, you know, the big venues like MS Bank, you've got yeah. small venues like 24 Kitchen Street. So people will have to move around the city and rediscover these spaces. And next to those spaces are the hotels, the cafes, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, that's how it, it's 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 been strategically designed in this way. You can, you can see that, and, and, and I'm not suggesting that you know my my podcast preparation is always this intense. But I did do a little Google Map search of all the venues to sort of get a rough idea of of of, of their location within the city centre, and and effectively it takes you on a cultural tour of some of the great locations within within the great city of liverpool which you know ha has a music culture there so uh, and something i wanted to ask you about as well is is I, I know not a lot of promoters but i know a lot of bands and artists and, and people who play live music and people who are connected in town center and city center music scenes which are the absolute heart of of the, the live music community any band that plays on the main stage at a major festival has at some point done a pub gig or a bar gig in a town yeah, city, yeah. town center or city center somewhere and so without that scene we don't have the big festival scene you know one feeds the other and and there is sometimes a disconnect i think in some of the cities between some of the big festivals that come in and 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 deliver themselves either inside the city or on the edge of the city and the day-to-day -day and week-to-week -week music scene that goes off in that city was it was it important for you guys to really make sure that you as a, as a major event that happens once a year that you have that day-to-day -day and week-to-week -week connection as well with the scene that's going off in the city well you know i i would never say i'm a festival promote um programmer by trade the lymph thing really interested me because there was on one hand, it was about um, reimagining the the editorial about Liverpool as a music city. That was really mm -hmm. interesting to me. And the second one was the opportunity because of where culture Liverpool and Liverpool City Council sits, and how they support culture and you know the music venues and promoters and the art to be able to go. Okay, well, that's loosely there within the music space because music's interesting. It, it's I suppose it's like sports to some degree. At a grassroots level, it will just happen. People. Mm -hmm. Pick up, you know, people will kick a ball against the wall or shoot a ball into a basket, or people will make music in the bedroom and all. But then, what can the city do as a responsible entity, I suppose, to make sure they can, you know, inject energy and opportunities and resource into that? And that's where I thought like Lymph has got to be that thing. So, from the very beginning, 2013, when I got involved as curator, that was what I was, I was saying is like, any artist that comes from Liverpool should have a relationship with Lymph 
whether it's through the academy which we set up which is to support unsigned 16 to 25 year olds or through the actual festival and there should be a pipeline so you'll have people like michael aldog who came through the academy and um, splinter project came through the academy and now is performing you know supporting the zootons and red rum club at lymph do you know what i mean mm -hmm. so to me it, it, it I, I wanted to ensure that the i suppose the way it was designed or the architecture of lymph would always feel like it's that way and every year we work with promoters you know this year we've we had a separate fund to make sure promoters really got a, a, a financial boost as well as you know a positional boost but our, our point is is this should feel of the city and, and my stance as i i suppose i don't own lymph but as my, my stance is when when we no longer have a purpose we should fall back and and we would have done our job at yeah. this point i think we're with lymph is a necessary element to ensure that it's it's a level of balance mm. what's happening in the city and, and you know i think we've done that with you know our gender breakdown and you know the diversity of music genre and also music creators who are performing but you know this year especially to me it's it's a significant purpose mm -hmm. is to make sure that the venues get a get the fair end of the stick for you know because they haven't had that for a while and again we've you know I, i'd say if you look at ticket price you know, we've put in great artists at very low ticket prices with the aim of just driving people to venues. And the deals we've done with venues is we've paid, you know, I'll be totally honest, we've paid the going rate for um, for the rental of the space. Yeah. That also provided the marketing budget so they don't have to spend their marketing budget and they can take the bar. And that was the purpose of it. You know, yeah. we, you know we were put in production if need, but the purpose of it was meant to go, you know, this should be a great weekend for you guys. We tried to be in as many venues as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and and yeah, and then we just want that, and then obviously for the punter, we'll just go there. The person who just buys it, it'll just be a great show. Yeah, absolutely. Is is it inevitable that because of the way that the the, the format is being delivered this year, you've got official venues now? Any, anybody who knows Liverpool knows that you know th there's a pub or a bar, you know, virtually on every corner. You know, if you can get a guy with a guitar or a guy with a, a keyboard or, or a, a laptop in there, they will do. Are, are you embracing the fact that venues who are not official venues and part of the lineup will will embrace the fact that the festival is happening and maybe program their own artists. Are, are you cool with that? Yeah, we, we'd hope that. And we found that even when we we're in Sefton Park, that would happen in the city centre and, and fair beyond that, you know, there'll be things going on. There'll be unofficial lymph after parties, et cetera, et cetera. So we're, we're you know, we're all right with that. I think the first year lymph, we, we opened it up and we basically said, anyone got a music event, put it under our banner. And mm -hmm. what we realised was the, the, I suppose the promise to the customer we couldn't control so we were very yeah. keen that going forward it would be even more curated yeah. what people were putting on stuff as long as you know they were taking care of it whatever but as long as people knew what we were putting on sure. that was important so i think you as you probably see from the design elements you know we're very specific about the brand we tweak yeah. the logo pretty much every year to ensure that if people see this logo you'll know it's a new look and feel so people know that this it, it, what us and what's not but again, as you know, as a city, we just want to see people engaging in culture, mm. people visiting the city because there's there's energy here, mm -hmm. um, and 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 really that's what it's about. You know, as much as Lymph is a music festival, um, and you know, from my point, I take that very seriously. The quality of it, we also know that it's it it is about people discovering, even if you're in Liverpool, you know, discovering different parts of the city, discovering new music. Um, you know, enjoying the whole city offer. And again, for people who are coming over, when we have a lot of people come from abroad every year and from across the country, them either rediscovering Liverpool or discovering it for the first time. And we're very keen that, you know, even going forward, that's, that's part of the offer because that's a unique offer. Yeah. Uh, and it's interesting, you said, you know, discovering new music. And, and one thing that stood out to me when I looked at, at the lineup um, it is, you know, you talk about discovering new music, but discovering new music doesn't have to mean that it's a new artist. 100%. It could just be new music to you. Okay. And when I look at, look at the sort of what you're trying to do culturally with the, with, the, with the festival, that really sort of seems to be a key word in this whole thing is culture, because I look at artists on the lineup this year, like Aswad, like De La Soul, UB40, you know, there will be kids going to this that have never heard or even seen those artists before, but those three particular artists for their own unique reasons all have a place culturally if you look back through history you know what ub40 is what it means yeah, yeah. how they sprung up what aswad did for, for for their genre music de la soul what they were creating you know culturally they've all had an impact haven't they yeah and you know this year the every year i put a theme on on lymph because i think when they first um 
give me the role as curator. I didn't even know what a curator was, right? And I remember looking into it and the idea of like, you take a lot and you whittle it down and you make it make a, a, you make an editorial point through through that lens. And um, I think the idea of a theme is important because Liverpool's got so such a vast appetite for music and mm. there's, you know, country music, blues, jazz, there's loads of stuff that you can have in and loads of stuff you can lean to. So I've always tried to go, okay, what are we doing here? One year we've done World Firsts. Mm. Where's, one of the themes was World Firsts by collaboration. So we've done, you know, we had this, you know, Boy George with Bernard Butler and, and they've done something for the first time, collaborated first under a tent and Steve Levine, you know, musically direct. Like we've always tried to do theme things and just make sure everything feels like it's going towards a the theme. So this year was powering the people in the music. Mm. And the idea behind that was, you know, we've had a couple of years where we've maybe trusted in scientists, trusted in governments, and are heartbroken in both ways. <laughs> but you know yeah. what always makes sense to all of us is the artist and the artist point, the artist point of view. Not that the artists are always right, but yeah. that's always there. And, and in each other, the people, the mm. majority. So I, what I try to do is, okay, and then, so I come from that angle and was like, that's what I want this year to be about. That, that, that's why it makes sense to go to the venues and support the promoters and okay well how does that look like with artists and I'm like okay what artists have really stood for that thing yeah what artists stood for what artists have had purpose at the forefront or have broken boundaries and that's when I started getting a long list and I was like UB40 you know I was looking at the specials you know I was looking at De La Soul, Mostef you know you had all these artists come out and then you had you know some artists who were pioneers and so it just and that's how I formed my long list, and then it was obviously the usual program. I said, you know, you go for saying yeah. you don't get it, you try to work it out, dates and stuff, and then you got to this point where you know, you know, you mentioned you before the De La Soul, you know, um, co even people like Koji Radical come up, like it's these artists that I feel like you know really stood for something. So when I look at Lymph through that through that lens, mm -hmm. and obviously what everyone should or or whatever people, I'm happy with you know. John Smith from Kirkdale looking at it and going, oh, that's good, or that's not good. I, I get that. But from, from the lens of the way it's been put together, you go, okay, well, it makes sense from top to bottom. We get why mm. these artists are on this year mm. and why, why it's important and stuff like that. And I, and I, think, I think that's, again, you know, when I'm looking at the uniqueness of Liverpool, um, Liverpool International Music Festival, it's not just, you know, a festival that's affordable for people or a festival that's led, you know, funded by the city council or whatever. I think it's it's the perspective and the statements each year, I think, which makes it quite unique in the landscape where so many festivals are just driven by getting as many artists, uh, getting as many people in and a certain type of people so they can consume a certain thing that goes back to the festival. Whereas this is like, no, this has actually got a, a reason for being here. Have you, um, have you communicated uh, some of these messages to the artists via their people ahead so that they know that when they're, you know, arriving, they'll be on tours or they'll be doing the festival circuit during the season. You know, is it important to you that, that the artists themselves understand what you're trying to do in terms of put, putting them in these venues and, and, and giving back to the city a little bit? Well, when I contacted agents and managers and some artists direct, that's how I lead it. I always yeah. thought, why? Because my point being is it's like, again, there's a million festivals that you can yeah. go and there's a reason why I want that specific artist. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's like we've got a, a free event called Still Do the Right Thing. Um, and it's got Children of Zeus on, it's got Popular Jude, it's got Blue Lab Beats, and and I I literally made it very clear that this is what it's about. And it's a show again that you know we spent quite a bit of money on. It's a free show because again, mm. I think these artists are really important, and that's what I really wanted them to be able to get behind what this is this is for the people and this is for a very clear purpose and you guys represent that and that's why we want you on that show so i communicate that very clearly at the very beginning um, mm. and i think it's important and one thing i've always wanted to have is and I, I definitely feel it locally but i've always wanted people to feel a level of um connection with lymph mm -hmm. not just the audience but the obviously audience is important but i want the artists to take part in lymph to actually understand what it's about mm. and i feel like you know nine years in I think agents, managers, and the artists that you know end up coming back around, or at least when they perform, then that they, they finish it, they actually understand why this is here. Yeah, it feels. It feels. I mean, again, you know, I'm only drawing opinions and uh, uh, and and feelings from from the stuff that I've looked at in advance of this recording today, uh, and what I knew 
in its basic sense about the event before, but it does feel more like a, an arts event than a music festival, if that makes sense. If people yeah. can, if you, if, if that, you know, if that distinguishment is is clear, it does feel like an arts and cultural event as opposed to a music festival. I, I, I take that um, as a huge compliment because mm. it's, it's music culture. It's like, it, it's, it's because it's, because it's, it's tied to, the energy of the city and the, the DNA of the city, I would hate to feel limited and it be a bead with yeah. Lee Redding. Yeah, yeah. Dallas, do you know what I mean? And that's no offense to them, but I, I think in my mind, I've never, when I got asked to program every year, I don't look at those for the inspiration. Yeah. So I look at more like, you know, there's this amazing, um, brand called Fader Four. So there's a magazine in the States called The Fader and South by Southwest. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Activations. And then I look at, you know, Manchester International Festival. And then sometimes I look at, you know, Edinburgh Fringe Festival. I was going to say, it, it seems more akin to the Fringe. Than yeah, the, yeah. yeah. That, how does that work? And how do they engage? And, you know, are they daring or are they surprising? And, you know, and again, it's like, and, and that's how I see it, you know, like very, you know, this year is quite, um, Genre wise, you know, you got you know, you got hip hop, you got reggae, you got you know, next year might be more house music or the year after that, maybe. And and I feel like we've been able to flow because as the energy in the city and the appetite changes or fluctuates, or you know, I feel like we're able to do that because it's not the way a music festival is where it'll be the charts that will dictate or streaming that will dictate. This is like what feels right and what feels right for the venue. So, like, even with. Uh, De La Soul originally were in the Philharmonic, but we've had to move them because of a, 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 a issue with them traveling. But like, when they were, I was like, what would work in the Philharmonic? Like, what could I put in the Philharmonic? That's not the Philharmonic on on hundred percent used to, but my question. So the original idea, I'm just throwing all kinds just about the original thing was um, most deaf with a with an orchestra. It was <laughs> right, brilliant. So that was the original thing. But then it got to the line. He had to do. He, he had some things he couldn't. But I was like, what I want to do is put hip hop in the Philharmonic, but put it as a musical offering. So then within the Philharmonic's offering, it's special, but it's also for the hip hop heads. They're not going to a dark club somewhere. They're going to like the Philharmonic Hall. So it's, it, you know, a lot of that's, you know, and, and that goes into it. So like nothing's like me going, I oh, will just throw that there. Heartless Crew, who are a UK car garage crew, you know, I've made a success, but 20 years, 20 years on, they're still relevant. I was like, where would they like to do now? They do a lot of clubs. And they do a lot of those, or they'll do like I'd be fair. Okay, what about putting them into like 24 Kitchen Street, 300 cap venue that I considered almost like, you know, the new cavern, the cavern for the new generation. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't we put them in a place like that? You know, low ceiling, you know, cultural institution. Let's put them in there and just pack it out. So it's it's all this stuff go all this stuff, but I I feel that's from like the energy of of the city and. You know, mm. and again, that's why it is. It's a music, culture, and arts festival. And if anything, that's you know, that'd be one of my ambitions to grow out the art element even more. Yeah, yeah. We, we are actually doing a project with Liverpool John Moore's um, University called yeah. Still, Still Do the Right Thing, it, and it's an exhibition. But we're actually going to create this like capsule. But we've had these like top tier creatives work with young people to do a response to the film, do the right thing, the Spike Lee film, do the right thing and draw out on how will that look like as a t-shirt or a screen print or a poster or and and because I'm, I'm just keen that like music's never ever been just sound yeah you know the latest music movements are like 3d you can live it you can wear it you can breathe it you can speak it and i'm just like i'm, I'm very interested in how lymph always explores that every year on year yeah uh, and it's interesting you say that you know I've, i'm i'm a a music fan, a, a, a performer of, 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 of sorts. Um, and, you know, I always l love the, the link between music and, uh, and, and visuals, the visual aspect, you know, the, the, the two together, you know, and for a lot of people, you know, if, if you talk about artists and songs and things like that, it, it, I'm amazed a lot of the time people have no clue, you know, what you're talking about. Um, and yet you will mention a scene in a movie and you'll go, it's that piece of music that plays and they'll go, I know exactly which song you're on about. I absolutely love that song, but I had no idea that it was by, you know, whatever. You know, you, there's a scene in Goodfellas, I think it is, where there's a big explosion and 
it's the big piano music playing and a mate of mine loved that scene because he's a big fan of the, the mob movies and things like that and for years he had no clue that that was by Derek and the Dominoes and it was Layla you know it was the the, 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 the outro from a, a piece of 70s classic rock music um and and it's that that link between sound and and, and sort of screen um I've always well, been sound, fascinated with that. sound screen and then culture because like the reason why I mentioned um the Spike, Spike Lee uh, movie do the right thing it's like obviously there's you know great soundtrack in there and he was very good at bringing like orchestration and stuff like that into film so you'd be watching this gritty film and then it'll be like properly composed music on it which is always in but then it had a knock-on effect on how we viewed culture so I remember reading something about him and in that film he used loads of bright colors and people assumed that that's what people in Brooklyn at that time wore and he was like no I just felt it would look better on screen but what happened was Everyone started wearing bright colours, so it almost yeah. Gave of it. Yeah. And, and I just loved and like you know you know we've done stuff around punk music before, we've done stuff around hip hop, right? We've done all these things, we've done documentaries, and my thing is like music has never lived in a bubble, so you can't consume music and be a lover of music without being influenced in how you speak, dress, socialize, whatever. Do you know what I mean? And it's 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 that thing which makes a city based festival that's. Um, I suppose facilitated by the city, but is meant mm. to be owned by the people of the city and the city. And like that's what makes it unique. And I'm I'm always trying to drill down and go, you know, how do we do it? But again, the challenge every year is to do it in a way that it becomes nationally or internationally relevant, but mm. locally locally relevant too. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. That's the struggle, but because the way the city is always developing, and because of you know we did we you know we had the Beatles, but we also had Cream. And we also had Eric's and we also had the Cavern and Maisie Beat and we also had Skiffle and we also had one of the biggest jazz scenes. And we also had one of the biggest, you know, country music scenes here. So I think about Caribbean probably, music as well in the Windrush generation. Yeah, they all docked yeah, in, yeah. You, know, you know, those ships docked in Liverpool, you know, they brought with them the, 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 the Caribbean and the West Indian music, you know. And we've got, you know, we've got a tour as part of the festival this year, which is looking at the old LA social clubs we've got. The timepiece event, um, which was it's a dedication to the Soul Club, that was the biggest Soul Club in the UK. That was in Liverpool. We got the original DJ Les Spain, who then went on to work at Motown. So all this is like weaved into the fabric of Lymph Twenty Twenty Two. And 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 again, this is what I'm saying: we can we can bob and weave through these errors and these influences because the city as a music city is always evolving, and audiences always evolving, and people because of the internet and things like this will always be discovering a little strand of something they didn't know so like my hope is someone will hear that and go i never knew that about liverpool i might just go and check out that show and then it just drags them into this story okay well now i'm at the time piece thing and that was the 70s oh now the real thing were late 70s okay so now I'm, but how did that work with the and then you start unpicking this thing and you're like oh mm. my god this is a one, wonderful tableau of music yeah. this, you know social you know it's a social study almost well, well uh, you know, events, this is where events play such an important part in, in, in geography, you know, in, in, in locality. It, it is, you know, every town has got something to be proud of. Every city has got something that it's famous for, you know, and, and, and events of any nature, not just music events, but this, you know, this is the event industry news podcast. You know, there's all sorts of shapes and sizes of event that people organise who listen to this. And and it's not just about music events, but any an event of any nature can be, really important for any given location you know you, there's always something that that, that, that a town or a, a place can shout about and that somebody can make an event out of and, and and i think that culturally they do play a really really important role events you know and not as i said not just music festivals you know it could be a conference that, that, that that's linked to the fact that the town is famous for a certain industry or whatever it may be you know? i think that's the true art in it like you know and, and I say this not to take away from the art of programming the biggest acts and making that work and putting them, you know, and production, mm -hmm. I think that's amazing. But I think there's an art in taking real living editorial that comes out of cities and, and, and leaning into the culture and then going, okay, well, how, how does that work? And then almost mm -hmm. then making that event almost like a place setter. Do you know when mm -hmm. people talk about Primavera? And everything that comes with it, and the whole experience, like or South by Southwest on a lot, you know, like you, you're you're getting pulled into this space, but you, you are experienced that 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 town and that city. Do you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I, I think that relationship's really interesting. And again, it's you know we have it in Liverpool with the biennial, 
you know, that's an art, you know, event, yeah. festival. We have it with, you know, look at the, you know, the football clubs in another way, you know, sports. It's like, you know, people traveling to Anfield to watch LFC and understanding why Liverpool has this pride and this energy. And it, it's, it's something really, um, it's something really interesting about that. And I think, you know, that, that industry, it's, it's good to see the industry back on its feet and it, yeah. it's great to see it, it thriving again. Um, and I think, you know, that's, that's many things, you know, the cream rises to the top. So you see a lot of, you know, a lot of festivals just con- constantly trying to innovate and work mm-hmm. out how best to please and engage. And I think that's the challenge now. I think it's like, you know, unfortunately, a lot of events and a lot of venues have gone. So the ones that are still doing it is like, let's give people something that they deserve because maybe a lot mm-hmm. of their favourites are gone or maybe the the interesting ones may not survive because they might have not been as sustainable. So again, I go back to Lymph this year. It's like, we've got a responsibility to try to add something that that is interesting and get people out the houses and get people to come together in it and just 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 experience something good that they'll they'll walk away with good memory from uh, absolutely and and i know that art- artistically you know that that is very much where where you sit you know in terms of the curation and things like that but um it would be remiss of me not to maybe ask what while i've got the chance um some some questions just on the delivery aspect of it. Yeah, and we yeah. don't have to go in, in loads of detail of this, but I'm just curious about how at, at the very start of this recording today, you said, you know, two with well, less than two weeks to go, you put the, your faith in the process, in all the hard work that's been done up to this point, not just by you, but presumably by teams and teams of people who all have a, a little area of responsibility that contributes. And and one thing that struck me doing the venue and going back to the format this year and the multi venues, when you've got Sefton Park and you can put a big fence around it and say right everything inside that fence is ours and it's our responsibility and we've got to deal with that health and safety security bars vendors stage production blah, 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 blah. by doing it in this other format now that must make the the job list 100 times bigger because you've got to work with venues presumably you have to take some sort of authority with the venue because if they're an official venue even though they will have their day-to-day working practices, you've got to take some sort of responsibility there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and from a production point of view, you know, if an artist wants something quite specific from a production point of view and the, the venue don't have it in-house as standard, you've got to work with that. So you've probably got a bigger tech team, you know. It, has your, has has the LIMP team operationally had to expand because of the change in format? Yes and no. It's it had to expand. We've had to expand our bandwidth and how we think, because right. it, it's, you know, like little things like we have venues meeting every two weeks. So mm-hmm. we get the ven- like, we've never had a venues meeting because we've never had to, because it's been set them half. So, you know, so it's the same team, but doing things in a slightly different way. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we don't have to have, we don't have to bring in so many cabins, but the production team and the site team don't, you know, they are, they're working with the venues or they're working on, you know, okay, well, we've got this venue, and we need these very specific decks or these amps or whatever. Yeah. So it's just working in a different way. So it's like we've had to expand our our bandwidth. I wouldn't necessarily we, we say we've expanded our our team by numbers, but the way we've had to work has been the, very different. And I think from my perspective, because I've, I've worked with culture even through the pandemic on smaller projects, but I mean, it has made me value that that teamwork yeah. a lot more because we've all had to look at each other and go oh no, this is slightly different. Like it sounds great on paper when we're talking about it internally, but mm-hmm. to do it operationally and do it to the high level we expect, we've all got to actually lean on each other. And you know, when we don't know, we've got to say we don't know, or, you know, do we have to bring in, you know, or listening to the venues is a key one. Like in our venue meeting, it's like, we want to do this, we want to do, and you know, a venue might go, oh no, that won't work for our audience. What we want is give us 55 a freeze. We'll put our own street team on it. We don't want to use what you're doing, the mass stuff. We'll do it this way. Okay, cool. We've got to empower you guys. Awesome. Yeah, great. Yeah, and, and it's a learning thing. And my point of view, and we haven't spoke about money, but like this format is cheaper. Yeah. Right? Which is which is a great thing at a time when, you know, city councils are still getting cut and Liverpool, it constantly gets cut every year um, in terms of their, their, you know, national funding and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. to me, it's, it's, it's a responsible way of working. And if we can make a format, that can be replicated and we can build on a build on. I think this is this is the way potentially to go. Not that I don't love, I'm, I'm going to miss Sefton Park, especially when it's hot like this. And yeah. Sefton, it's wonderful to have 40,000 people watching artists, but I do think there's something really interesting in this. And I do think it moves us to a point with the festival where 
maybe the, the city, and I'm not saying this should be where it should go, but maybe the city takes a bit more ownership as in the city institutions, the venues and the promoters, because I think this could be a wonderful open source thing, like Edinburgh Fringe and stuff like that, where it is curated and directed, but the venues and the promoters all have a lot more stake in it, rather than us going to the point where, you know, very easily we could be a festival where by you know, we do the park thing and we push to 80,000 people a day and it's, you know, it's great and it's moving yeah. money, but it, it feels divorced from the city. I think this is a, a very interesting format. Well, it, it goes back to is it sort of, I suppose, the, the word longevity and and the, I mentioned about the sort of the day-to-day and the week-to-week music scene in any in any given location. And and the beauty about a format like this, and I'm going to give a shout out in a minute to, to, to somebody, but the beauty about a, fest- a festival like this and the format that it's in is that for that one weekend from Friday the 29th of July till Sunday the 31st, a, 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 a huge percentage, I've no doubt, of the people coming specifically for Lymph will go into some of these venues perhaps for the first time. And they'll go, what a great venue for music. I'll look and see what's on in there. And suddenly the venue is not just benefiting from that one day, it's benefiting benefiting from a new audience of people potentially who've never seen their venue, who've never seen their programme of artists before, who suddenly think I had a really good time in there, let's go back and let's go. That's why it's quite interesting about the economic uh, impact and and I'm the same as you, you know, I think maybe we, we, you know, it would have been undershot, but my point being is like, you know, that long tail, which Mm. is, I feel, you know, a big one for me, which can't be measured, I feel comfortable in that venue and I've never been there before. Because yep. that means that it could be 10 years time when you go to that venue or it could be, you know, when we do stuff with the universities and, you know, stuff like that. It's like, it, it, it's what does that do? You know, I know for, for me, the Philharmonic was an institution that for years I knew about. But until I started, it wasn't until I started putting events on that I felt comfortable going into that venue. So my, mm-hmm. my thing is if I can put something in people like me who consume a lot of music who feel like they're in the, and can go anywhere would feel comfortable going into that space now. What what does that do over the long term? More than just that weekend, the way we measure how many people, you know, buy coffees, yeah. stay at hotels, yeah, yeah, yeah. What does that do over long, and I, and I think, you know, it, it it's it's that kind of thing to see what could that be like. We've got radio stations here. Well, what you know, could you do a takeover next year? And you know, like how much how much more can we do? But you've got to build you've got to build the format, and once you build the format and get it ready, um, right, you can start expanding. And I think. That's what's interesting about Lymph 2020 or extra interesting about Lymph 2022. Yeah, d- d- definitely. I'll go along with that. And I said I was going to give a shout out. And I hope you don't mind me uh, gate crashing, gate crashing this podcast. But I have put on my my Barnsley Live t-shirt. I, I was looking at that. I was wondering what it was. I couldn't see Barnsley it. Barnsley Live. Uh, and this, this is my Barnsley Live 2022 t-shirt. And it's, um, I, I would say, similar format. You know, it's, it's a multi-venue music festival that takes place in Barnsley every year for free. Uh, and you know they, they take over you know 20 or so pubs bars of all shapes and sizes they program bands for the day and coming off the back of the pandemic when they that they, they brought it back again you know it, it, it was that huge boost it was brilliant to see it was a couple it was a few weeks ago and I was I was part of the team on that and it, it's my town that I live in and yeah. so it was great well, you to know, see you know it, it was it was great it was great to see those venues full people out drinking enjoying live music people who don't go out to watch bands you know that that that's, that's, that'll be a big part of your audience yeah they're, yeah. they're doing it because it's it's a day out and why not you know embrace that it's that one time in that summer that you you go okay you know I'm gonna go and see something I, I think that's important I think again it's where these city-based community organization or community focused you know cohesion focused entities i think have have a great role to play and why they're so important because mm. you know again not to down any corporate beasts and stuff like that but the corporate that's not their the cohesion for cohesion mm. stakers no it's, it's, it's driven by shareholders yeah. you know yeah. let's you know let's i know it might be a you know bold statement to make but ultimately you know big Big organisations that put on live music, you know, are, are ultimately driven by boards of directors and and shareholders, and 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 they, they, they've they've got to make money, so they've got to make money in the biggest and boldest way that they can do, uh, and that that works. But it doesn't work for for every event, and and independents particularly have a bigger as bigger role as ever. I think the independent festival music scene in this country more so than ever before to, you know, because they have the luxury in some respects of not looking at the 
top 40 artists list and deciding that's who they should book. They can choose what they want to book because they like it. Well, again, I'm not to be in that rat race because I think there's there's a creativity in going, I can't just pull from them. And because I'm not part of a consortium whereby we can go, such and such artists will only play our festivals across the Europe for this. You know what I mean? I think there's something, okay, well, who Mm. else is important from that scene or, you know, what statement are we trying to make? Again, I go back to the Limp 2022 conversations at the end of 2021 and we're sitting there, it's like, why should we do another festival? That's where we started that. Why should we do one? Okay, we should do it because of this, this, and this. And this. Okay, what would that look like? Where should that be? You know, do you know what I mean? It's 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 about providing this creative solution to yeah. you know, and and I don't think many festivals look like that. Okay, how can we drive this? Or you know, what can we do two sites at once? Because if we do two sites, we can get double the amount of people. Like there, those conversations are not conversations we're having. We're going, you know, where could it be? And okay, there's. Africa OEA is doing, you know, they, they're celebrating 30 years. Okay, how do we weave in with Africa OEA to make sure we're, okay, yeah, we'll do a project with them. Let's, you know, co-pro. So it's, it's, it's a very different discussion. And I, and I think, again, independent organizations and independently minded people who work in corporates, I think they'll always bring that to the table to just make mm-hmm. sure something uh, interesting is being put out there and something, again, with purpose. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, dude, we can't all be Coachella. We can't. I wouldn't can't. mind doing a Coachella once in my life. I, I wouldn't mind having <laughs> tens of millions of pounds to be able to do stuff. But I do. I just think. And then you know, doubling it and just doing it on another weekend as well, yeah, just so you, that you can get another audience of people in again. You know I mean? But I think you know. I, I, I think, and that's great. Again, you know, uh, you know, we are we are the team out at Wireless, um, doing the content from Birmingham, um, mm. uh, and. It, it's great to see that many people engage and, you know, you really nail your target audience and, 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 and it's wonderful. But I was like, I could go, that, that lineup will be somewhere else in Europe this year, probably five <laughs> years of the fair. And that's no criticism to it, but it is what it no, is. No, I get exactly what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, these, yeah. These yeah. mid-level festivals, these independent festivals that will do something really interesting. Like we've got an artist called Geike who's doing this thing called System where he's building a new age sound system for the first time and he's he, it, 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 it's it's so, it's like he literally builds it over four or five days in Invisible Wind Factory, which is an art, music, warehouse entity mm-hmm. on the North Docks. So he's building this thing, and then he's inviting his friends, essentially, including Flo Hyo, God Colney, etc., to come and perform with him. You know, and stuff like that. I think it's just really interesting because it's not just a plug in and play, but it's like this guy who's actually he's he's, he's designing this one off thing. That does not exist post this time, and he, and it's in a venue which is a bunch of guys who were makers who set this venue called Casimir, and then found this place on the North Docks where the new development of the city is going. So everything about it editorially is just really interesting. But to people who don't know, Geik is just performing in Liverpool. But for people who do know it, it's just something interesting. And, and just you know, my yeah. thing is where do those where do those people get to perform and yeah. do these important things? If everything's about top forty streaming artists. It goes back to that word culture again, because culturally the building of sound systems in certain musical cultures is so significant. You know, mm-hmm. anybody who knows the reggae or the, the you know the real old you know two tone and ska music knows that DJs, you know, it, it, it's part of the culture. There is is the building of your sound system. Well, you know, it, it's a really personal thing. That's it. And and again, my point is, Geik is the, ch- the a child of that generation. So my thing. When he when he's talk when we were talking, he was like, "I've got this idea that I've I've done at Somerset House and I want to do it again." But you know, but my thing is, it's a new age sound system. So whereas before there were big crates and this that and the other, mm. it's the spirit of that, but new age. So I have plasma flat screens and I have this thing and it, you can plug this. You know, and I'm just like, and he goes, "It's actually an installation, but it fully works as a sound system." So I'm just like, "Okay, cool, that's amazing." Because you're going back to power, purpose, people. All these things we were talking about. But then mm. on one end, you have UB14 Aswad. On the other end, you have Geica. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's like both sides of the coin, same purpose, different generations. And Maybe that's-, that's a proposal for Ali Campbell. Tell him to come in. He's got to build his own <laughs> P. He's got to rig his own PA. There's your high viz. There's 10 cases there you need to unload <laughs> before you're allowed to go on stage. <laughs> um, we've been talking on a podcast to Yawawusu from uh, 
the playmaker group, but more importantly, uh, with, with a curator and an organiser hat on for the Liverpool International Music Festival, which takes place between the 29th and the 31st of July and has joined us here as we've recorded this for context on Monday, the 18th of July. So just under two weeks to go. Really, really busy time and uh, an absolute pleasure to have, have had a chance to just have a chat with you, ask some questions, find out what you do. And we could have talked for ages. I feel like it's one of those today that that we could have had so much more to talk about. And and please come back on. Let us know how it all went. We'd love to sort of, you know, we're talking two weeks out. Digest it. Come back on in a few months time and tell, it how, tell us how it all went, what you learned. Because I'm sure you're going to be learning stuff every day between now and, and the I'm, end of the event. I'm totally up for the debrief. I'm totally up for it because I'm gonna learn a lot, and I think that's what's interesting about doing events. You know, anytime you think you've you've got it, it's like holding water. Something will go wrong, and you've got to learn from it. So I'm I'm totally up for that. But again, I just appreciate the time you've given me today to talk with you. Not a problem at all. And 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 we should, you know, in, in the interest not just of parity, but you know, we're all in this together. Shout out to to all the organisers out there at the moment. As I said, we're in right in the peak of the summer season. It's it's hot. It's sweaty out there. There's people working hard, uh, and there's a lot of teams of people out there who haven't done this in three years. Um, so good luck to you all. Stay safe, everybody, and and hope that everything goes well. You know, uh, uh, over this over this summer season um and of course just a little shout out for our very own event industry news um if you want to keep up to date with everything that's happening in the industry over this period of time and any period of time if you're listening to this on one of your podcast platforms today just in your headphones head over to eventindustrynews.com and have a little look around the website um have a little look at the news the supplements the special features there's a supplier directory on there as well if you're if you're an organizer and you're looking to source suppliers for your event have a little look through eventindustrynews.com and uh, and of course if you're watching us on eventagenews.com already and you're looking at the video of this then don't forget go in the opposite direction as well if you've never listened to us via the audio only versions the podcast is available for, from wherever you get your podcasts from so uh, have a little look at us and you can go back through you know nearly 300 episodes now that we've done over the last few years to have a, uh, a chat to loads and loads of different people from across the vast spectrum of this wonderful industry that we call events Yao, it's been brilliant to chat to you good luck with everything in the next couple of uh, couple of weeks uh, stay in touch let us know how it's going and uh yeah we'll see you all soon on the next edition of the podcast cheers everybody 